Hello. OK, it works. Fantastic. OK, time started. Hi, everyone. Gosh, um, there are more seats at the front if you do want to come to the front. That's cool. Um, my name is Jenny, as Sonia just mentioned. And I want to talk to you today about getting ready for PHP 7.2. I really should have updated the talk title, because really, it should be 7.3. It's just that when I submitted my talk, I kind of forgot that updates happen, <laughs> which is ironic. Um, so what is PHP? Let's start at the beginning. PHP is part of the foundation of WordPress. It's the primary thing, um, primary technology that WordPress runs on top of, amongst other things. And it's an important part of WordPress. Without PHP, we don't really have WordPress as we expect it today. There are three current supported versions of PHP, 7.1, 7.2, and 7.3. And if you go on the php.net website, you'll be able to see um, what the roadmap of these supported versions are. I want to highlight one particular thing on here, which is the way they talk about active support and security support. So once a version of PHP is released, it has active support for about two years which means that bug fixes will happen, and there are small increments. And then it turns into security support for one year, where only security critical things happen. And that's quite important, because even today, security releases for PHP 7.1, 7.2, and 7.3 were released, I think, this morning or last night. Now, you probably noticed that 7.1 is in orange, and I've highlighted it even more here. And that's because the active support, if everyone remembers what today's date is, ended last December. And the security support has started, which means we've got eight months before that is also end of life, which makes me feel like this cat. So if we're going to talk about WordPress and PHP, we should actually look at what versions of PHP people are using to run their WordPress sites. And there is a pie chart for that, because there always is. On the WordPress.org website, there's a lovely page called Stats. And you can find out lots of information, like WordPress stats and, and PHP stats. And this is the stats from not today, but yesterday. And I doubt they've really changed that much overnight, unless you've all got an upgraded PHP, which is fantastic. Um, and I can just get off stage. <laughs> what you can see from this is, over half, or just under half, of um, versions of PHP people are using are 5.6 and 7.0. Now, the end of life for those two editions of PHP was December last year. So these are not getting any of the security updates that were released this morning, which makes me feel like this. The whole grayed out area is all the unsupported non-secure versions of PHP, and it makes me just cry a little bit inside. And it's not just one zombie. It's really a whole army of them. <laughs> and it is funny. And I have done this talk multiple times in different iterations. And the pie for supported versions is getting bigger. But we all have a hand in this. We need to check if we have a zombie PHP lurking in one of our websites. How many of you here can be confident that you have a current version of PHP running your websites? That's not all of you. So some of you have homework to do. But it's really easy. There is always a plugin for everything in WordPress, and this includes PHP. Um, you can download the site health check Plug in, and that will tell you what version of PHP you are running. So you don't have to try and work out where it is in cPanel. You can just look on the inside of WordPress, and it'll tell you in the dashboard, which is fantastic. Um, the good news, WordPress works on all the latest versions of PHP. It's one of the first projects to run on the latest versions of PHP. So we are doing good in that sense. But it's always the custom code, the plugins, the themes that we actually need to check. There's a tool for it. Like all good things in the tech world, there's a tool for everything. And there's a tool called Static Analyzers in the tech world. And basically, they're spell checkers. If you 
they check for your spelling mistakes in your code, and they'll check against different versions of PHP, but they do not check that this code makes sense. So the sentence might be gibberish, and it will pass. So if you're not a developer, but you want to see whether your website can be running on a later version of um, PHP, you can, there are solutions for you. Like all good things in WordPress, like I just said, there's a plugin for it. <laughs> um, the lovely people at WP Engine made a plugin of PHP Compatibility Checker. And so you can download this. It gives you a screen like this. Unfortunately, it doesn't do 7.3 at the moment, but I did talk to them last night. Um, and it does do it up to PHP 7.2 at the moment. Um, and you can also scan between active plugins and themes or scan all plugins and themes. I recommend all plugins and themes, and I recommend 7.2 because 7.0 is already dead. You end up with a search, re um, search result page like this, and it means that you'll know which plugins and which themes are compatible and which are not, and which you're going to have issues with. Scenario two, you're a developer or you're a techie person and you're working on a project and you want to check if your code is actually going to work on 7.3 as you go along. There are tools for this. Now, there's 12-minute talk. I'm not going to explain how you do this, but there's a good thing called Google and other search engines are available. Um, so you can just search these tools. It is pretty simple for somebody who doesn't write that much code anymore. I even managed to do it yesterday. So you can all do it too. Um, and I would like to highlight um, PHP compatibility WP because that actually removes some of the false positives that you'll see in the regular PHP compatibility one that the whole PHP community uses. Where in your development workflow you might do this? Um, you might do this locally, manually on your terminal. Uh, you might do this as a pre-commit hook. And you might do this as a pre-deployment hook as well, depending what kind of system you're using in your company or on your, in your own workflow. I tend to do it locally just because I'd rather see my mistakes myself before the rest of my colleagues see it. Um, but it's up to you. If you run it locally on the terminal, this is what, one of the first things you'll see, which if you're not a developer or you, you kind of don't like the terminal, it can be a bit daunting. But it's not too bad. It's just a graphical representation of what's going on. So it tells you the number of files it's checking. So at the, this was a very basic version of WordPress. Um, if it's got any dots, that's a good sign. If there's letters, that's a bit more problematic. And you, what you want to aim for is no letters, basically. So especially no E's, no errors found. Warnings, you can get away with it without it, but I recommend listening to them. Um, and S's, I haven't actually worked out why that happens, so someone can tell me later. That's great. After it does all the scans, you end up with a report of all the errors and the warnings, and it ends up like this. Um, and this is really useful, too. You end up with information about which file the error or the warning was in. It tells you exactly what line in that file they found the error. Doesn't mean the code was there, it might be somewhere else. But it also tells you what type, if it's a warning or an error. And most importantly, which is why I think is important, is this piece of information at the bottom of each one in the brackets, which is the th rule that the error broke on. So you can actually take that rule, put it into search engine of your choice, and find out what's going on. And lots and lots of people have documented how to fix these things, because a lot of people have already migrated up to later versions of PHP. I also mentioned WordPress coding standards, which will tell you about deprecated functions in WordPress as well as in PHP, so please also use that. So if you have a site which has errors, then you need to migrate. It's like moving home. Your best friend will be the php.net manual. And in there, the documentation is very verbose, and they have examples of how to move stuff. Um, so they'll tell you like the backwards compatibilities, what's deprecated, the new functions that you can use, and also the changes, which are kind of important. So if you're going to start migrating your code base, depending on where you are, the, lar the larger the numbers of PHP you're having to migrate from and to, the more work it's going to be generally. If you're having to migrate from anything which is five, 
five point something to seven, that's where the most of the work is. And the lower the number, the more work you need to do. But start out your current PHP version, use the static analyzer to work out where the problems are going to be, check php.net for what you need to do, and then do it, and keep repeating this until you get to where you want to be. And on the appendices to the side here, it actually has every single migration from 4.0 all the way to 7.3. So you can do the whole entire migration. There are some caveats because it's technology, and it wouldn't be technology without caveats. Some functions output in PHP have changed their outcome, which means if you're expecting a particular thing, it might be something else, which is fun. Um, a static analyzer or spell checker is never going to find that for you. Um, so you might end up with quirks when your client is working on it or you test things, and those are runtime errors, and they can't be detected by spell checker. There are lots of upsides, though. Better performance. If you're on a small site, it's, it's not going to see much significance, but if you're on a big site, you're going to see at least a, the benchmarks are around double the amount um, in terms of performance. If you want to save polar bears, by upgrading to anything higher than PHP 7, you're going to be using less computing resources, which means more polar bears happy. It means that bugs that we have been hashing together and plaster, putting plasters on are now fixed, especially things like PHP date time. It also means we get security support, so that's always a win. And there's lots and lots and lots of other new features and functions, um, but 12 minutes and one minute to go. So if you care about keeping your WordPress site up to date, then you should also care about keeping your stack up to date. The foundations of your house are super important, and this is no different. Developers and hosting companies are your friends. Yes, we charge you because we need to eat money, eat and, <laughs> <laughs> eat and pay our mortgages and like, live. But if you're a plugin author, there's way more information. There's lots of work in the community that we've been doing. So we can actually set the standard for everyone, and there's a whole bunch of resources on the internet. But my favorite is the Lorna Jane uh, talk at WordCamp London in 2015, which was a long time ago, um, and also a whole bunch of stuff there. My slides will be online. Kitos. <laughs>